In this video, we will write the onApplication start method of the application.cfc file. So let's return to ColdFusion Builder and I will return to my application.cfc file right here. Now, just below the four properties that I have already defined, let's not forget our commenting best practices here because I will write now my onApplication start method. All right. Now to define that method, I need, of course, a CF function tag. And the name of the function in this case is on application start. Now that on application start method returns a value. It returns a Boolean value. So I need a CF return tag here that returns true. A Boolean value is actually true or false. Now this is how the ColdFusion server knows that an application start is finished. When an application start will be finished, it will send the value true back to the ColdFusion server. So the ColdFusion server knows that it can safely move on to the next step of the process, which is, for example, the on session start method, if it is defined, of course, in the application framework. Now, in that application start method, I will create instances of the components that I need. Remember, if I go to director.cfm, for example, remember that I create here an instance of the page service component. Then I use that instance to get some data from the database and then to output that data on the page. If I go to history.cfm, it's the exact same story. I create here a new instance of that very same page service component. Now, instead of creating a new instance of the same component for each page, why not creating a single instance of that page service component in the application scope? Remember that the application scope is available throughout the application to all the pages. So each page can use whatever data is defined in the application scope. And so if I create a single instance of that component in the application scope, it can be used by any page of my application. So let's return to the application.cfc and I will use here a CF set tag to create a new variable. And the name of that new variable is application dot page service. Now, this is how you create a variable in the application scope. You just prefix the name of your variable with application dot. And that actually defines the page service variable inside of that application scope. And it makes that page service variable available to every page of the website. So I will make that equal to the create object function of ColdFusion. And I want to create an instance of the CF training dot components dot page service. Now I will do the same thing for the other three components here of the components folder. So let's select that line of code here and I will copy paste it three times like that. And I will create now the events service variable, which will contain an instance of the events service component. I create the news service variable that contains an instance of the news service component. And the last one is user service. And it contains an instance of that user service component. So I will now save my application.cfc and I will return to director.cfm to make that page use the new instance of the page service component that is defined in the application scope. So first, I will remove that line of code here because I do not need to create a new instance of that component on that page because it is created by the on application start method in the application scope. And here I need to use the application that page service component, which is the instance of the component that is stored in my application scope. So let's save that page and let's run it. And it looks like something is missing. Now this error is expected. I don't know if you anticipated that one, but it is perfectly fine. In the next video, we'll try to understand why this error occurs and of course, how we can fix it.